Thanks, Pat. Uh, Bob Fryer. Yes. Hi, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to mention, uh, first of all, the monthly school board meeting at the Churches Valley School District is tomorrow at 6.30. Uh, but you still, but the public still can't go to the meeting. I, you have to do it over Zoom. But I guess uh, that's when they're going to decide how they're going to uh, handle teaching for the next several months. So many of you guys might want to check in with that. But at any rate, uh, my main comment is last week uh, uh, I I mailed letters to you guys <clears throat> Uh, uh, explaining uh, several reasons why I feel that I could be very helpful to the new manager, the engineer, and you guys to help uh, improve uh, everything in Bridge Hill. The, uh, uh, the, uh, I've always, I think that uh, my helping make presentations before the federal, state, and county agencies that have the millions uh uh, to give communities like Bridgeville would be important because the data that, that I have accumulated uh, proves that Bridgeville has never received its fair share of the, those funds. And I think uh, with our two new, uh, our, our new manager and uh, engineer, I think uh, we can really, really actually get millions for pro projects in Bridgeville not just uh, uh, hundreds of thousands, and uh, the uh, the in, in terms of uh, uh, yeah, in terms of uh, some people that might uh, uh, suggest that I'm uh, capable of being helpful to you guys. Um, uh, there, here are some uh, experts. In addition, uh, uh, John, uh, Professor Euler sent a very nice letter to, to everybody, uh, I think, last week. I didn't know he was going to do that. But at any rate, I want to give you some names of some people that you can contact uh, at very agencies that I've been uh, uh, talking to for several years. And you can... Uh, check with them about the availability of funds, but naturally uh, I've checked with them about what they thought of the, my solutions to some of the original problems at the army Corps of engineers, by the way, the two fellows you can make notes of Alan Edis, E D I S and Mike Beavis. And you can reach them at four, one, two, three, nine, five, 7,500. <clears throat> and in terms of the, uh, uh, the guys that, the person I talked to about extending the uh, Willing Lake Erie Railroad Bridge uh, so we can add two more lanes under it. The fellow who uh, called me back and spent 20 minutes on the phone with me uh, liking the idea and, and uh, pledging the company's support was Casey Connor, C-O-N-N-E-R. And what he liked was... Uh, the fact that uh, the, I, was, I was suggesting a two-stage uh, construction phase that wouldn't uh, uh, it wouldn't affect their use of the line, and uh, the in terms of uh, in terms of uh, the guys from PennDOT, unfortunately, uh, I I can't mention any of those names for obvious reasons. Uh, the, the one fellow who knows a lot about the uh, efforts I made through PennDOT, however, is uh, Tim Anderson. Uh, he retired about two years ago, and he was familiar with my proposals to Dan Cessna, the former CEO there, and was very and, and thought they were quite capably done. Uh, he, by the way, is the fellow who uh, runs the food bank at the Bridgeville uh, uh Bethany Church, I think, once a month. And another person who, of importance that you can call, uh, especially since uh, flooding is still a, a major problem, is Bill Segura, S-E-R-G-I-A. You can reach him at 717-783-0369. Uh, he was the, uh, he was the yes, fellow that... Mike, yeah, yeah, he was, yeah, he was the fellow that Mike Tomer 
Bill Clusey and I drove up to the McLaughlin Run Trick several years ago because he wanted to take a look at the upstream uh, a contour. Uh, that's that's that seven square mile area that keeps flooding. Uh, it keeps flooding uh, Bridgeville. Uh, he mentioned one thing that I recall uh, that uh, in addition to trying to uh, widen and deepen. Uh, the creek bed of the creek through Bridgeville. He said, since we're at the bottom, obviously, of the stream, we have a major debris problem. And he said, uh, you're going to have to, uh, he said, don't think that the usual solutions to the problem are going to solve the problem. He said, you're going to have to do something about either increasing the speed of the water uh, through the creek bed. Anyway, let's not talk about that. Uh, you guys can work that out. But another person I spent a lot of time making presentations for Bridgeville to is uh, Andy Waples. He's, I think he's the CEO of the Southwestern Pennsylvania Planning Commission. Uh, just several months ago, he allowed me to place two, uh, two foot by three foot drawings of the solution to Bridgeville's traffic congestion problem at his annual, at their annual meeting at the downtown Pittsburgh. And when the meeting was over, he asked if he could keep the drawings to study. And uh, before the the fellow that I was dealing with before, whose name I forget, was in charge of the community relations. Uh, And he came with me to meet with the South Head Township engineer about four or five years ago to endorse the uh, the uh, uh, fundamental uh, two-way couple through Bridgeville and uh, eliminating the one foot, well, one thousand foot long two-lane restriction. And what else uh, can I think of? Oh, yeah, one other thing you might find hey, interesting. Bob. Rem- hey, Bob. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. Who uh, willing, like you, you mentioned a fellow by the name of Casey Connor. What's his role there? You know what? I'm not. I'm not sure what his role is. He seemed right. to be uh, he seemed to be an engineer type, but he was uh, he spent. Uh, excuse me. Who, who who am I talking to? I, this is Bill Henderson. Oh, William. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't recognize. Yeah, he spent uh, uh, twenty minutes. I was very surprised about the phone call. And he spent uh, 20 minutes on the phone with me, and we went over all aspects of the uh, the possibility. And I men- might mention uh, he, like most of these other people at the Army Corps and uh, behind the door, through the back door at PennDOT, he mentioned very specifically that unless the solution to the traffic <laughs> that involves uh, extending the railroad bridge Unless the solution eliminates the entire traffic problem for Bridgeville, Safat, and Collier, he said we are we are we'll never get any money, and we've all been talking about that for years. We have to make it a comprehensive three community solution. But the but the solution's been sitting before us for a long time. But his name was Casey uh, Connor, I believe. Yeah, I'm, thank I'm, you. I'm certain. That's okay. Yeah, thank well, you. Wanna, and, and, it, no, go ahead. go ahead. I didn't mean. I just want to mention one other thing that that indicates the the approach that we, that we as officials not I'm not I'm not an official, but you as officials have to take. Uh, I don't know if you remember when PennDOT wanted to widen the South End Bridge over the Chartiers Creek between Bridgeville and South End six feet. <laughs> there were two people. <laughs> they. Uh, 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 Penn got publicized in the newspapers and every place else that that would cost uh, uh, $500,000 to move the above ground uh, gas terminal and move a a simple electric line over the bridge. But the people that uh, that uh, from the People's Gas Company and the electric company that came through with cost estimates that proved that it was only one hundred and Thirty thousand dollars was George Pizzuto, and he said seven two four eight three zero five two one nine, and Janice Kraus K R A U S. She said four one two two five eight four four five nine. What I'm the point I'm trying to make at make is we can't sit around anymore and just 
allow PennDOT or anybody else to push us around and not give us the money that we're entitled to. If it requires some research, if it requires going to different sources of cost estimates, uh, that's what we've got to do. And I'd like to just end up by, by right, mentioning let, this. All right, let's, let's, um, move, let's move forward. Uh, okay, I just want to mention one more thing, and it'll take a minute. Uh, last week, uh, uh, I, I dropped off a, uh, a request for documents uh, with uh, one, of the, one of the with Cheryl. The we, all, we all got copies of that today. Um, okay, that's good. And that, yeah. that, tells you, that tells you what I'm up to. I want, I'm really serious. I, I really want to be on the planning commission. I don't think any other candidate can help the town as much as I can. And I'm, I'll be more than just disappointed if I'm not appointed. And again, thanks. Say, thanks for your time again, guys. Thanks, Bob. Hey, Bill. Yes. Let me make a quick comment. Go ahead. We've got two other candidates for uh, this position, and yeah. Bob knows his way around meetings and whatnot. I'm not so sure the other two candidates were aware of this. Bob more or less presented in addition to his resume. And somehow I think these other two candidates ought to get a shot at presenting what they want to present. And that's all I have to yep. say. Yep. Fair, I agree. fair enough, Jim. Yep. I yeah, agree. Absolutely. That's uh, very, very fair. I agree. Who, who do we have next? Matter, matter of fact, From, matter of fact, excuse me. Bob, Bob, I, you know, I got uh, your point. We got your point and we appreciate your interest. And, uh, but we're going to move forward with the next speaker here. Who do we have next? Hi, uh, Kirsten and Milena Rogers definition. Um, I thank you all for your time and for your service and your dedication. I would like to respectfully request a revision of the standing ordinance for um, chicken keeping in the borough. Um, according to section two, part one, section 101, um, which is the only ordinance that you can find online for um, people here in the borough, uh, a small animal is um, a chicken. So, and under that, and there's a, a number of other ones, but the chicken uh, falls under that, um, under section, chapter two, part one, section 103, it uh, outlines how you are supposed to keep said chickens. Um, and this is what I have used for a number of years. It's what I printed out when my husband and I started keeping chickens. Um, now, my daughter, who wanted to start keeping chickens as well, asked again, am I allowed to keep chickens? I said, according to the ordinance that are online, you are allowed to keep chickens. Um, all of our surrounding communities South Fayette, Upper St. Clair, Scott Township, Carnegie, Collier, and Cecil permit chicken keeping. There, are, Some of them have uh, permits that you need to have. Some of them have uh, boundaries as far as how far you have to be from a roadway or a neighbor's property line. Um, and I would truly just like to um, request a revision of the ordinance. What I would like is because if the ordinance that is um, here <clears throat> states that it's, you need to have 25 feet from a property line, many lots in Bridgeville are only 50 feet wide. I would like to 20 feet from a property line. That way you're not um, excluding everybody in town who only has a 50 foot lot. Um, I do think that there should be a limit on chickens. You know, I don't think anybody needs to be, have 100 chickens or 50 chickens or 25, 25 yeah. chickens in their yard. Um, no, however, no. for their own family's consumption, I think in today's world of clean eating, and I know antibiotics or no processed foods, um, an awful lot of people are... Um, Preferring to have 
this over the white carton that you pick up in the grocery store. Um, the last thing that I would like to mention, and I hate to take up your time, I know you guys have a bunch of stuff to get to, is my daughter um, got a notice on the 1st of August. And the notice is says final notice. Now, she never got, you know, it, it, in my experience here in Bridgeville, if there is a complaint. Normally you get a call from the borough or you get a police officer who comes up and says, there's been a complaint. Um, at which time you have the freedom to talk about the issue and resolve it so that there are no further complaints. Um, if there is, then usually you'll get a second notice in the mail or something that says first class mail. But for a very first um, communication about a complaint to have a letter like this sent, I don't really think that's meritable. Um, I have a lot of facts about chickens. If you'd like to, if any of you would like to hear any of them, I like I said, I know you guys have a bunch of stuff to get through here. I would, like I said, respectfully request that this ordinance be looked at. And um, in this letter that they sent, excuse me, they um, refer to another ordinance that is not um, viewable for the public online. So I'm not sure where that ordinance came from and they did not uh, print the full ordinance here in the letter. So I cannot give you any, the only thing I can give you is chapter two, part two, section 201. Thanks, Kirsten. Um, first of all, let, let's, uh, let's address there. There was a legitimate complaint made and we're not here to discuss the validity of it or, or, or whatnot. Um, our new manager arrived a couple weeks ago to a stack of complaints in town that had really gone undressed for a number of months. And, um, you know, as we would expect, you know, he's begun to address these issues and, and that's what led to the letter that you got. So, um, that said, you know, our solicitor provided us with some legal opinion on the matter, uh, which... In, in his opinion, does support that our ordinances currently do not allow for raising chickens in a row. And I'll let him speak to that. Um, the issues come up before and, you know, we've had some preliminary discussions about it. Um, I'm in agreement with you that, you know, in our world today, you know, whether it's COVID or farm to table talk or, you know, all that that goes with, I think there's room for discussion. I'm one person. Uh, on this on this board, but I think there's room for discussion about it. But I want you to know that the the letter you got was based on uh, a decision that the solicitor did some legal research on. So, Tom, you have anything you want to add right now? Um, yeah, Bill. Just again, just calling kind of balls and strikes on it without an opinion, pro or con. When you look at the ordinance in Chapter Two, even though in the definition section it includes fowl chickens within the definition of small animals the operative section technically prohibits fowl so technically we do not presently allow them in the borough and as mr henderson said if if council wishes they are in vogue in many places um uh, different regimes that you can go with i i ha i may have in the past and am happy to provide folks want to review potential you know ordinances and even the city of pittsburgh for example down to a 45 foot lot they kind of proportion uh the numbers you're allowed to have within reason no roosters uh sanitation rules and whatnot is what you commonly see in the ordinance but you know hyper technically speaking i do believe our ordinance presently doesn't allow them Okay, uh, you know, again, that said, I, you know, I've had some brief discussions with others and, and the floor is open to any other council people here. I, I think, again, I think there's some room for discussion to, um, to work with 
uh, you, yeah. Kirsten, and, and some others to, you know, to find a way to um, to do this where, uh, you know, we're not interfering with neighbors or, or whatnot. So I, if you'd allow us that some time to come up with that. I, I think that would be wonderful. And, you know, I don't mind saying, you know, they need to be kept in their pen. They're not allowed to range. Um, I don't mind a, a number limit per family, depending on size. You know, the bot family might have needed two dozen chickens in their backyard. But, you know, the Henderson family at one point might have needed two dozen chickens in their backyard. Um, right now, you know, there are a few people in town that probably only need four chickens to have, you know, fresh eggs on a daily basis. Although there are other people in town that I've spoken to because of dietary um, needs, they eat a lot more eggs than you or I do, you know, and they may eat four to six eggs a day because they're restricted by so many other foods. Um, and I think, you know, in this day and age with so many of our surrounding neighbors addressing and allowing this, um, I think maybe we need to, you know, catch up with the times and, and get an ordinance that is going to be um, something that's going to make everybody happy. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Thanks. Henderson, I forgot to mention too, I, I'd be happy, Joe and I'd be happy to feed some samples to the uh, planning commission in advance of their upcoming meeting. And let me say, I was just corrected on the use of the term hyper technically. It's just regular technically. It's what it, it's what the definition says. Um, uh, Mr. Solicitor, is it okay if we make a motion on the floor at this time to have this ordinance looked at and reviewed, please? Or should I wait till new business? You can do it now or new business. Um, you can direct us to refer uh, samples to the Planning Commission, actually, and ask the Planning Commission to make recommendations for you at your next meeting. Uh, that would just be a motion to, you know, a resolution, so to speak, to resolve and ask the, the administration and uh, Planning Commission to make recommendations regarding such an ordinance. Thank you. I would like to do so at this time, make a rec motion for recommendation for Planning Commission and Administration Committee to revise and amend this uh, ordinance, please. I'll second that. Bruce. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Our motion passes. We'll get with you, Kirsten, and, and uh, we'll, we'll get something together. Thank you very much for your time. Everybody have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Too. Thank you, Mr. Solicitor. Thank you. Anybody else we have in the in the room that wants to speak? I'll take silence as no. Okay. We'll move on with the regular course of business. Um, I need a motion to approve the July 13th, 2020 regular meeting minutes as submitted. Bruce, so moved. Do I have a BJ. second? BJ second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to approve the August 2020 bill list. Joe will move. Nick second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to approve the August 14th, 21, 28, September 4th, and 11th, 2020 payrolls. Joe Colosimo moves. Bruce second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to authorize partial payment number one final from Victor Paving and Construction Incorporated for contract number 19R01. 2019 road improvement program, an amount of $102,805.89, payable from the liquid fuels fund as reviewed and recommended by the borough engineer. I'll move. Second. Joe and Nino, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. I need a motion to award, bid, and authorize Stefanix Next Generation Contracting Company, Incorporated to repair the concrete head walls to the commercial street culverts in McLaughlin Run Creek at the price of $20,974. I'll move. I'll second, Nick. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. 
Uh, I need a motion to adopt resolution number 2020-11, a resolution of the Borough of Bridgeville approving the Coronavirus Relief Fund recipient agreement with the County of Allegheny. Uh, BJ moved. Do we have a second? Bruce second. Bruce second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Any idea when we'll see that money, Joe? Joe Cower. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I have to submit the application this week. Oh, okay. All right. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. Um, I need a motion to appoint William Johnson as full-time police officer from the eligibility list as certified by the Borough Civil Service Commission on August 6th, 2020, subject to passing the physical and psychological examinations. Bruce, so moved. Nick seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Question, I got a question. I just want to let you know that there was six candidates that had taken application. Uh, five showed up and we ended up with four that passed the test, all the tests, and Bill Johnson was the top candidate in the whole list. So as from civil service, um, I just want to thank the, the new members of civil service for helping us. Lisa's with us now, but it, um, it was interesting to only have a handful of candidates. So, but uh, moving forward, uh, Bill Johnson was the best candidate um, to the top of the list, so. What was that? Is he a part-time officer right now? Yes. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate that. And, and thank you, Lisa, for uh, your work on the Civil Service Commission. So um, the motion was on the floor and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to appoint Dane Lauer as a part-time police officer subject to passing the physical and psychological examinations. Bruce, so moved. Nick yes, seconds. Second. Bruce and Nick, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion passes. I need a motion to accept and pay any commission due July 2020 real estate tax collector report. I'll move. Bruce will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to accept the June 2020 Treasurer's Report. Joe V. Move. Second, BJ. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to accept the July 2020 Police Report. So move, BJ. Nick, second. Bruce, move. <laughs> We got uh, BJ moved and Nick second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The close Opposed. third for Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Opposed? Motion passes. All right, let's move on to committee reports. Administration, uh, Virginia Snyder. Um, Mr. President, you have my full report, but I would like to mention at this time that um, it was brought to our attention. Our, it is a request from the uh, administrative offices that we consider changing the times for um, business. So uh, we have approved that. Therefore, the times will now be um, 8 to 4 as opposed to 8 to 4.30. Um, effective uh, today, August 10th, 2020. Um, and the reason for that um, partially was due to the reduced amount of foot traffic in the building after 3.30 and the lack of the employees being able to take a lunch outside of the building. So they were eating lunch at their desk and taking less than a half hour or eating and working at the same time. So uh, we can revisit that at another time if need be. But currently the hours will be from 8 to 4 p.m. And changes have been made to the website and um, the doors for, to notify the public. I don't know if there's another place, Joe. I think that's it for now. Okay. Uh, and the other issue that came up was apparently in the past, and I was unaware of this, uh, it was brought to my attention that there are several people that bring their sewage bills or their, um, yeah, their sewage bills down to the borough building. And they had been kept there for a time until someone from Jordan Tax would pick it up. 
Um, since COVID, these bills haven't been picked up and some of the residents have received delinquent um, fees due to that. Um, so we decided that since the payments are to go to Jordan and they provide an envelope with their bill, these residents should no longer drop it off. We won't be taking these um, bills at the borough building. They'll have to send it directly to Jordan. Um, so the staff will let them know and we'll also update that uh, on the website. And that's all I have, Mr. President. Thanks, BJ. And, and I, in our discussions, I think we were receiving on average uh, eight to 10 payments a month. Is that correct? Right. right. Uh, in, that, in that venue. And really, I think we're doing this to protect those eight to 10 people from getting late fees. Um, if you can drive them down to the, the, um, the borough building, then it's probably best that you drop it in a mailbox and guarantee you're going to get them to the appropriate place so that they're registered. So thanks, BJ. Uh, finance, yeah. Joe, Joe Verduzzi. Uh, finance committee has been very busy. I, I, before I start that though, uh, I know I mentioned, or Bill, you mentioned this for me last month. Uh, it's very important. Uh, you've been seeing TV commercials. You've been receiving all kinds of mail. I got one, two. I mean, I probably have five or six here, but it, that's how important it is to uh, uh, fill out your questionnaire for the census 2020. Uh, please remember that those uh, things, when you're counted, that goes towards the funding for Bridgeville. So it's very important that we get a full count and be able to to take advantage of, of that because uh, in the past that hasn't really been the case. So, so please, if you get it in the mail or, or just go to their, uh, their, their website or uh, which is my 2020 census.gov. And they ha even have an 800 number. If you wanted to just call that 844-330-2020. And you could just answer the questionnaire there. Uh, so that's that. Um, as far as the finance committee, ever since uh, the last uh, council meeting, we've met quite a few times. Uh, this uh, last week, we met with uh, uh, borough uh, manager Joe Carr uh, to discuss where do we stand as far as the budget. And he did a lot of great comparisons from last year, and we're neck and neck right with it. So the anticipated concerns on, on a few different uh, items like uh, earned income tax, uh, a few other items, uh, we have, we're right in, in line. We're, we're not too far off if we are even off. Um, obviously, the real estate taxes are coming due uh, the end of this month. So uh, to take advantage of those discounts, please uh, make sure your mortgage company and or yourself send those bills in as soon as possible. Uh, and uh, there was a couple items on the budget that we're a little off as far as expenses, but it was understandable. Like we had explanations on each of the, the different things. So we're in good shape there. Uh, finally, and you're gonna hear this from our engineer that we have a ton of projects that are gonna be uh, happening this fall, uh, which requires some money, uh, which when we did all the planning for the budget this coming year, uh, we were really wanting to go forward and get a lot of this flood mitigation stuff done. and and a lot of the different projects, McLaughlin Park, uh, just lots and lots of things that have been sitting on the, the back burner that, that we haven't gotten done or just haven't had the ability. Uh, and we have postponed considering financing or anything because we were waiting for all these permits and, and everything to be approved. Well, we got into that point and I'm pretty excited that you're gonna see a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Kevin's gonna, I'm sure gonna be talking about a few of those things uh, this fall. So what uh, we have the finance committee is uh, suggesting is, uh, I don't need a vote today, but we are going to talk to a few banks and have conversations in regards to getting that loan that we talked about at the beginning of uh, uh, the year when we were doing the budgets. We're going to go full throttle and try to get as many projects as we can done this year and going forward. So uh, there was a lot of planning in the last two years, and now we're finally going to be able to see some things uh, being done. So it's, I'm really excited about all the things, uh, but uh, that is where we stand. We met with one bank this morning that uh, gave us a lot of positive feedback. Uh, rates are going to, are ridiculous where they are. So it, it's, what did you say, Joe Carr? It's almost like it's free. You can't say that, but, but that's, <laughs> it, 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 it's close. 
So uh, very excited, and uh, we'll we'll bring back another report. Uh, hopefully, actually, probably before the next meeting. But we're we're going to be close, and we'll we'll talk more about it at the next meeting. Any questions for me? That's Thanks, all Joe. Right, Bill. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, Parks and Recreation, Joe Colosimo. Yeah, I got not too much. We need a little bit of rain because the parks are burning out. But uh, one small issue, which I've been going on and on over for years now, is the camera down in Chartier's Park. Uh, I guess last month we had an issue. Somebody got down in there and dumped some uh, tree clippings and trees and whatnot. And they just dumped them down there where our guys used to shred the uh, material that they would collect. If we'd have had the camera down there, we probably would have caught the person that did it. And I, I mentioned it to Joe, and he's going to look into it. It's in the budget. But I think it's time to get the camera. And that's basically all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Public Works, Nino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I can't tell you that we've been cutting grass, but we've been cutting some weeds. Try to keep uh, everything uh, look nice, and that's done. The public work has been very busy. They're doing the creek right now, and many other little things. I don't have the note in front of me, but uh, they they are very, uh, a lot of things goes on. Uh, they did so much. I don't remember if we ever painted the, the, the stripe yet. We want to do it one time, and then it was threatening of rain, and we don't do it. Joe, how we stand with the uh, um, marking the uh, the stripe and ton? We haven't done it yet, right? They started about two weeks ago, and the game plan is to finish up this week. That's what I thought. Very good. Yeah, we had to quit because it was threatened of, of rain. So they need also a, <laughs> a good uh, word. I mean, they've been doing a heck of a good job for the – for the few people we have. And uh, that's about it, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you, you Nino. Mm -hmm. uh, public safety, Bruce Gallarducci. Yes, the only thing I have, Bill, is um, the fire chief had had some concerns and public safety was gonna meet with him, but we waited till Joe came on board and uh, Ray and Joe Cower got together and they worked through the issues and my understanding is with the help of the building inspector and that, they were working through the issues. And other than that, I don't have anything else. Um, okay, thanks, Bruce. Uh, Mayor Betty Copeland. Thanks, Mr. President. I only want to congratulate our Chief Costain and his wife for their 11th year anniversary. Councilman Joe Verducci and his wife for their 25th anniversary. Councilman Joe Colosimo and his wife for their 40th anniversary. God bless all of them. Thank you very much. Uh, Your Honor, I'm going to mention probably the longest one. Just a couple of days ago was 60 years for me. But I don't need, I don't need any comment. Well, I'm sorry. If I'd known about it, I would have been happy to mention it. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. Yeah. Congratulations <laughs> to everybody. To Thank you, Joe. Everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Police Chief Chad King. Thank you, Council President. Uh, I want to start off by thanking the Civil Service Commission, Public Safety, the Borough Council, and the Mayor. Um, we were able to get through this process pretty quickly as far as getting uh, some folks hired. Although the numbers were low, um, I can tell you that the, the candidates we have are very good. Uh, we have some quality candidates and numbers are low across the board in every community right now. This isn't the most popular profession uh, that one can choose at the moment. But uh, I'm confident with the guys that we choose to hire and uh, Officer Johnson should be starting on the schedule next Sunday, provided everything goes well this week and probably have Officer Lower start the following week after that sometime after the 21st. Um, I do have a, a plan in place to introduce these new guys to the community. Um, we had a uh, local business owner step up. Uh, his name will be disclosed later uh, in a Facebook post, but he has offered to foot the bill for a Kona ice truck 
So I'm thinking we're going to do a little event called Snow Cones with the Cops, and we'll probably have that scheduled sometime late in the month in August to introduce the two new officers to the community. And uh, that's all I have at the moment. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chief. That's a great idea. I'll look forward to that. Um, solicitor Tom McDermott. Uh, yes. Well, I was going to mention Nino's anniversary in my report, but he stole my thunder. Um, other than that, you have my written report, and I don't have anything to add to that this evening. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, Tom. You're welcome. <laughs> Borough Engineer Kevin Britt. Yes, good evening, everybody. Um, we did submit our report date as, dated August 5th. Uh, I did want to update on a few of the projects. Uh, uh, as you've seen tonight, we did close out the 2019 uh, roads, 2020 roads. I would expect over the next 30 to 45 days, they should be in uh, to complete the paving. Uh, they're over in South Fayette right now, uh, completing a large contract. So I know you're on the schedule to complete with, um, with their roads as well. Um, and then as discussed, there is a number of projects that are either getting underway or will be going out to bid. Um, a pre-construction meeting will be held on uh, McLaughlin Run Park Phase 2 on the 14th uh, to discuss getting that project started. They have a number of materials, et cetera, to get ordered. Um, we did get um, a notice from the county that everything we submitted was approved and you should be getting your agreement for the GEDF. Once that comes in, we're ready to go to bid on the Janeway project, um, the McLaughlin Run Park Flood uh, project, um, which is in that. Uh, you did already a wardens being built, uh, Maple Street, and then another GEDF is Bower Hill Road. Um, those will all come with the same agreement. Uh, we also did have a meeting with the um, manager to review all the projects. Uh, had, a, had a really good meeting with Joe. Um, to discuss where everything's at and discuss some uh, additional grants that's out there. Um, the only thing we didn't get through, and I told him we would have a subsequent meeting, was on um, uh, grow grants for the sanitary sewers. Um, uh, that's a program that uh, you haven't had any funding from, but you are eligible from Alcasan. We've been in discussions with Alcasan on how to package a um, project that you could have some funding for sanitary sewers either uh, improvements that have been made or improvements that you still need to make um, that has to be by point of connection and it has to be at least a hundred thousand dollar project and um, we believe we have uh, a number of projects that may qualify for that uh, so we, we'll be working with joe and the um, sewer committee to discuss that and future maintenance on the sewers um, there has been a notice too that they're getting closer on the COA. I would expect over the next 60 days, um, Tom will be bringing that forward once um, the consent order is negotiated through um, uh, DEP, at least with that first draft. Uh, any questions? I had one, Kevin. Uh, you're talking about the GEDF agreement. So yes. So that goes through. So is bidding estimated next month? Yes. September? Yeah, so then once you do, well, will that work then go through the late fall or that won't be until next spring? Yeah, it'll go through um, late fall. Um, looking at these projects, they can be completed uh, in the winter, actually. So um, I would expect to close them out in the first quarter. Um, but we would like to have bids opened, especially on the park project, to get the dirt right. out of there from the field as soon as possible. So we would have that be as short of window of bidding as we can um, once the agreement's in place. Um, so that work will be uh, ready to go the second that agreement comes. The biggest thing there, there is a minority participation notice requirement within that grant. Uh, so once you get the agreement, uh, we have to go through the county to get the wage rates and then get that notice put out, um, which we, uh, we would do immediately, so. Any other questions? Uh uh, uh the for for the engineer is that uh include the parking lot over the building i understand right when uh, uh young uh construction comes into the road am i am i correct or i'm missing something 
Yeah, the parking lot um, at the building, uh, Youngblood, that's an ad alternate. Uh, it's paid for out of the general fund, but it is part of the liquid fuels bid. It's part of the, for reasons, so we can, yeah, yep. uh, that's fine. I am I meant to say when it's going to be done. I would think over the next 30 to 45 days. I have asked for a schedule out of them. Um, I know they want to fit it in while they're in the area, and they have uh, five municipalities in the area, and you're one of them. So um, they're going to be here for uh, the probably the remainder of the year. So, But we got the bids already, or, or never, never we did. Yes, we did. That's yes, got a, got a very good number, too. That's so good. I remember that. So it's been lock and done to be to go also uh, just for council whoever may be uh one push that we should Very definitely important. start to design a sign that we always say we're going to do that for less at least since we demolished the place so i don't know who gonna be maybe we put we put this on on the on a new manager at least to to start a, some kind of drawing joke if you know anything about the sign, if you don't, just ask any one of us, and uh, we will we will definitely tell you. He's we, already working on it, Nina. Oh, that's so wonderful! I tell you, I'm sorry, Joe. I don't know you were there first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate. There is there is another thing that uh, slipped out of my mind that we in the meeting with the Joe we talk about it. Uh, I'm embarrassed that I forgot what it was. That was minimum. So if I remember uh, before we close, uh, I thought the BJ is going to mention that. Uh, okay, that's all I have. You sure? Positive. <laughs> well, if okay. I remember that, a very little incident, that, not incident, uh, something very small. Uh, okay. I, I just want you guys to know. All right, thanks, Nino. Um, Welcome. And thanks, Kevin. Appreciate your, your work. Uh, Fire Chief Ray Costain. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Bridgeville Volunteer Fire Department responded to 46 calls for service in the month of July. Um, and I just want to take a moment to thank our borough manager and the Public Safety Committee for their swift action dealing with our concerns uh, from the nuisance alarms uh, at the Washington Avenue business. So that's all I have. Thank you all. Thanks, Chief. Uh, did Dan Miller show up? Uh, I didn't see him pop on there. No, I don't see him on it. Um, how about Mary Weiss? Is Mary Weiss here? She yes. asked me to ask when our banner might be put back up on the wall on Washington Avenue. I know it was taken down so that the flag could be placed there, but she would like to know if the banner that recognizes all businesses in Bridgeville have been for 50 years or more could be put back up on the fence. Mayor Copeland, we plan to put that back up before Labor Day weekend. So um, we, I talked to Mary Wise about that and that's in the works. So it should be up for that holiday weekend. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Mayor. Um, anyone from the library present? All right, no one there. How about parking authority? No. Uh, planning commission. I didn't see, uh, I did see Mike Tolmer. Mike, is there anyone else on? I don't believe so. You have anything for us, Mike? Um, as some of you were at the last meeting, uh, we kind of wrapped up our our year-long series on potential projects that we're looking at to present to council. Um, so we're uh, going to kind of did uh, Tim Knapp did his four square where everything kind of fell into place and we uh, put our little beans in each pot. And um, as you saw, one of the major issues that we want you guys to look at uh, for next year's budget is to start looking at a comprehensive plan. Um, there was some other issue. There was some other uh, uh, projects we want to look at as well, but that was that was the big uh, uh, thing that we want to push forward. Uh, but that will probably be put towards you in an official uh, format uh, from Planning Commission. 
That's it. Yeah, thanks, Mike. And I, I won't steal Joe's thunder, I, uh, whether he mentions it or not. I, I know he's already talked about uh, initiating that. Um, so anyway, without further ado, I'll, I'll introduce our new manager, Joe Cower. Uh, welcome, Joe, in the first meeting. Appreciate uh, your first two weeks and have at it. I just want to thank everyone for being so welcoming. Uh, the transition is going rather smooth. Um, it's been rather painless. Uh, we're getting caught up on a lot of things that's been hanging over the summer months, uh, as you probably heard throughout the meeting. I submitted my report. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Uh, on the report is just noteworthy <laughs> items going on in the borough office. We continued the uh, project log. Um, a lot of that, you'll see the updates in red in your report. And then uh, lastly is the code enforcement reports attached with permits issued for the month. Thank you, Joe. Uh, any questions for Joe? Okay, anything under old business? Nothing under old. How about new business? All right, with that, I'll take a, a motion to adjourn. So move. Second, Joe Colosimo. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion approved.